Joining me now is Democratic Congressman Seth Moulton. He represents the 6th District of Massachusetts. He's a veteran of the U.S. Marines who served four tours in Iraq, and he's also a member of the House Armed Services Committee. Congressman, thank you for being here. I, I want to talk about what we were just discussing in our last segment, and that is the Hamas-Israel war. For months, Israel's military has been pushing Gazan south to Rafah, further and further south, telling people that that was where it was safe to be. And now, those same civilians are being made to evacuate Rafah, almost with nowhere to go. As Israel plans a ground assault, do you have any confidence that this evacuation can be done humanely, or is it going to result in bloodshed? Is it going to be the humanitarian crisis that everyone else seems to be noting that is coming? Well, Israel is clearly trying to do things to prevent a further humanitarian crisis, but the sad reality is that based on the experience thus far in the war, I think I can say with confidence that it's not going to go that well, that there are going to be more needless civilian casualties. And what's important to understand here is that I'm someone who strongly believes that Israel has a right to defend itself, that we need to get rid of Hamas, that having Hamas around is not in the interest of the Israelis or the Palestinians. But the way Israel is conducting this war, they're not winning against Hamas. When you're in a counterinsurgency campaign like this, you can't just kill terrorists because you have to be aware that you might kill a terrorist and at the same time his brother might sign up. And we know based on just facts, just based on statistics, that there is more support for Hamas now in Gaza, more support for Hamas in the West Bank, indeed more support for Hamas in the Arab world than there was before October 7th. That's not a good sign for Israel's success. I want to go from the Middle East to Capitol Hill, where you are working each and every day. Uh, what do you make of the dysfunction that we're seeing among your Republican colleagues? I mean, ultimately, you're someone who, because you have been on the front lines, you've served our country with respect to your military experience, and you continue to serve as a legislator. Is there a concern about this this ineptitude around Congress impacting national security? Absolutely. This level of chaos, and as you said it, Charles, total ineptitude, absolutely puts our national security at risk. And what we need to understand is that I think a lot of Americans are tired of playing politics with everything. You know, they want leaders in Washington to do the right thing, and, and fundamentally, to do the right thing for our country. And for our security, it's a dangerous world out there, and we need to make America safer. And yet what these Republicans are doing is they play politics with the border. They're playing politics with Israel. They're playing politics with Ukraine. These things are important for our national security. They're not things that you should play politics with. And that's what the Republicans have been doing for day one. That's why they're inconsistent. They're all over the map. We don't even know what they plan to do at this point. You mentioned Israel, and, and I know we had moved on, but I do have uh, a, a, another question there. I want to play something that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told ABC earlier today about the potential of a two-state solution. Take a listen. And the substance, I've always said, in a future peace agreement, which everybody agrees is far off, uh, I think the Palestinians should have the powers to govern themselves, but none of the powers to threaten Israel. And the most important power that has to remain in Israel's hands is overriding security control in the area west of the Jordan. You were just talking about politics, the politics that are being played around that and so many other things. When you hear something like that, does that give you any confidence in the ongoing negotiations that the war has a potential end to it that any of us can see? I don't think we can see the ends of the war because the prime minister still hasn't articulated what that is. He can't describe what the political end game really is. I mean, in fact, the best solution that most of us can come up with is a two-state solution, and Prime Minister Netanyahu has flatly rejected that. Now, it's important to say that a lot of people in Israel disagree with Prime Minister Netanyahu. I mean, he has the, the, the worst approval ratings of just about any Israeli prime minister in history right now. So there are a lot of Israeli leaders who do believe in a two-state solution, who recognize that Israel is never going to be safe if Palestinians are not free, and that security for everybody in the Middle East does depend on getting rid of Hamas, but also having a legitimate Palestinian government that can give the Palestinian people the same rights as Israelis have. So if that's the vision, it's not being articulated by Prime Minister Netanyahu at all. 
we need to see some leadership and vision for uh, from the Israelis to show the Israeli troops fighting, risking their lives on the ground, and the Palestinian civilians what a peaceful future can actually look like so that everybody can get behind it. That was Democratic Representative Seth Moulton of Massachusetts. Thank you very much for joining us on this Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your day.